guys i was dead the f worried guys we're black you don't show up to someone's house and it. she's taking the bag and she's like trying to shove it in through the window she tried to end herself on my couch i was panicking i was panicking i was panicking is that not wild or is it just me is that not wild at some point you're gonna have to choose him or me and that's just that it's what she did when she got home which made it an issue to put it in simple terms rubbing like there's no reason for you to lie like it really showed me that she really didn't care about anything else <laughs> subscribe button to become a part of this little circle that we have built and if you are returning what's up bestie no because what's up both of you can go ahead and hit that like button because this this is a crazy one this is a story time about how i had to cut off one of my really good friends at the time because she tried to end herself on my couch and I know that sounds wicky wicky wicky, but that's really what happened. Like she tried to end herself on my couch and that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. There was just so much that was happening like back to back. It was giving toxic and a lot of what she stood on was like deterring me from my path in life and all that stuff. So I just want to start this story off by saying that from last I saw she was doing good and I'm actually very happy and God bless you if you're watching this. I love you so much and I always love you and i wish nothing but the best for you but anyway guys i'm drinking out of my cute cup i'm drinking this matcha matcha green tea is it matcha and green tea or just matcha tea whatever so let me start in the beginning of where we met we met both of us were promoters for this company that used to sell like concert tickets and like festival tickets and we the particular campaign that we met on was for Iverson tour and we were selling tickets for Iverson tour and we met really hit it off we hit it off so much so that I started calling her my sister like people would like get so confused like what are you talking about but like I was like no that's my sister like no like that's my sister like i would introduce to her to people as my sister and all that stuff yeah so that's how we met it was the iverson tour in durban i think i was around the durban area so jump straight to where it gets toxic because it wasn't toxic our entire relationship but i'm gonna jump for the purpose of the story i'm gonna jump right right where this got toxic she really had a thing for like really really toxic men hectic toxic men it just so happened that these toxic men happened to have some sort of social status so they were like well known i guess you could say some, some of them like famous i don't want to say some of them and make it seem like it's a whole plethora of men it wasn't really that many men i think it was a couple but like they were all like of some benoans i'm not gonna say any names but it's some benoans so we're gonna call her samantha her name is not Samantha, but we're gonna call her Samantha for the rest of this story time. Samantha, like, had really had a thing for popular toxic men. So she got a kick out of being the girlfriend of a guy that all the girls want. She got into this particular relationship. This particular relationship, we're gonna say it was with Rob. We're gonna call him Rob. So Rob is a really, 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 really well-known South African artist and when she got into this relationship with him like it became her whole personality it became her whole like thing when she got into the relationship samantha i'm not gonna lie samantha was like in love from what i could tell she was like in love with rob but rob wasn't sh to put it in simple terms rob ain't sh and rob was a serial cheater a serial liar a serial serial, serial, serial everything rob 
honestly in my opinion did not deserve not even an ounce of samantha did not deserve for samantha to even look at him did not deserve samantha at all the only thing that rob had going for him was that he was really well known and he was really popular and so there would be times where like girls would message samantha on some like da -da -da, you know you know woman to woman type stuff and that would really get to samantha and shame i really do believe that samantha really thought that it could be something but unfortunately rob just wasn't this relationship with rob became kind of like an obsession for samantha so much so that every time her and so i stayed in Joburg, uh they stayed in durban at the time so much so that when Samantha had an issue with Rob or like she was in her fields or whatever she would come to me in Joburg she'd come visit me and she'd stay over for however long X amount of time until she feels better and then she'd go back to Durban because unfortunately like home for her wasn't really much of a safe space and I really love that she could find like a safe space like within my space and I really like appreciate that that happened for her like her safe space would be my home However, when they would fight or whatever and she'd come over to my home, like Rob would call or like, you know, there'd, there'd be fights and she'd be like sometimes not feeling well or whatever, which makes sense. It got like weird because I was living with my husband and we weren't husband or wife at the time, but like I was living with my husband. You were coming into my home with my husband with your boy troubles and you guys were like, fighting and like all these things it just kind of made it weird i remember a point where my husband was like um is she only gonna come here like when she's fighting with her man like it kind of felt and seemed as if the only reason you see us is when you have issues another problem is that when she would visit she would not participate in the household things at all like buying a loaf of bread she never did she would she would never like participate in the home like she would stay for a long 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 period of time and like it kind of felt like and I say this with the utmost respect it kind of felt like we were babysitting in, in some aspect because it was like we would take care of everything and we had those feelings there but we felt like maybe we were being like so we obviously never said anything to her we obviously never like brought it up to anyone besides the two of us right because we felt like maybe we were just being told maybe like you know just give her some time and you know and then there was this particular time when she stayed over and she stayed over for like a long period of time i think it was like a month two months like it was a long like period of time she stayed over guys when i tell you she did not contribute for nothing i mean she did not contribute for nothing like at all like it even got to a point where it was like guys we're black you don't show up to someone's house and take handed like like that's just the thing like that's just the thing i feel like all black people have you don't show up to someone's house and like not bring anything like not do anything you know and there was a point where i even have like hosted we hosted like a brian for like our friends and stuff dal's friends and my friends and in the invite it basically the whole thing was like just bring your own just bring something country bring drinks or bring some like meat to braai or bring snacks or bring something bring some anything bring something and everyone bought something whether it was liquor whether it was meat whether it was snacks whether it was someone everyone bought a little bit of something and she didn't bring nothing 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 even to a point where one of my friends bought snacks and then at the end of the thing my friend took her snacks back home with her which was weird i'm not gonna lie but she would like had the audacity to like complain about that like how can she bring something and then she take it away i was like uh, yeah how dare she bring something yeah there was like a lot of these little things but like all these little things to me are all these little things to me aren't like big enough to end a relationship but it's like when all these little things like add up to the point where it's like it's a lot there was this one time so we were um out 
in the mall and then she spotted no we, were we out in the mall or was it in our estate i don't remember and she met this guy but like it was one of those like in between the relationships with rob she met this guy he was gorgeous and he would and she was like yeah i'm going there they went on a date and then they went out together she came back home like she'd make like inappropriate comments that would make you know my husband and my brother like really uncomfortable but like we would laugh it off like she went there and then she come back she came back this one time this is just one example she came back and she was like oh guys i can't even sit i can't even sit yo what he did to me was crazy like basically just telling us like what happened in their bedroom for me it was funny but for Dal and and my brother it was so uncomfortable they were like what so it was a, also a lot of like those uncomfortable ass like situations like she put us like are we about to talk about you know what i mean like we were all feeling a little bit like this is too much you know feeling but not knowing if we can voice our concerns or not because is it big enough of an issue to you know have a fight over and then one day she went out went out to i don't even remember where she said she was going she went shopping the, her going shopping is not an issue at all but it's what she did when she got home which made it an issue which made me think that she knew the uncomfortable situation she was putting us under she went shopping this one time and she came back home we were staying on the ground floor um let me let me show you guys so we were staying on a ground floor apartment and when you come from outside there's a bedroom that had a window right by the front door so like it's like here is the bedroom window and when you walk down it's a front door and the front door takes you through the kitchen it's the kitchen and then further in is the living room we we're all sitting in the living room we we're watching movies or whatever that bedroom window was open but it's open and it has like burglar guards so it's not like open where you can climb in and like or whatever like it had like burglar guards so we're sitting in the living room and we're all watching tv we're all like the three of us me my husband and my brother we're like watching um a movie and we're having a good time all of a sudden we hear so in the beginning we start we ignoring it because we're like maybe we're just hearing something maybe it's our neighbors maybe da -da -da -da. We're like no man so then my brother gets up because that was it was coming from his room he gets up he goes to the room she's trying to sneak in the plastic bags and the paper bags from what she went shopping with bags from her shopping trip she's trying to sneak it in through the window she's taking the bag and she's like to shove it in through the window hoping that we don't notice what are you doing hmm? what are you doing <laughs> nothing me <laughs> it's hanging around so my brother goes and he sees like someone putting in like h&m bags like you know cotton on bags through the window and he comes back like silently he's like guys guys come see this so we all stand up we go to the living room to the bedroom and we go and we're looking and we're seeing her throw in these things like through the window you can see the window from the door but when the stuff is on the floor you won't particularly see it because of the bed so we're seeing her throwing it in and then Dal's like just keep quiet just everyone go back because he wanted to see like what she was going to say so we went back to the living room we presented that we didn't hear anything guys i want you to understand like we're not her parents I'm not her real life older sister we're friends you know what I mean like there's no reason for you to lie like you can go out at any time we're not your parents go shopping come back with shopping bags like you don't have to run around sneak and hide in our house like I'm not gonna say sh if you want to go shopping give me the fashion show I want to see what you got baby I'm not gonna be like oh how dare you go shopping where did you get the money from it's quite frankly none of my business so the fact that she was hiding the shopping bag validated for me that she knew exactly what she was doing she was staying in our house for months at a time without contributing towards food without contributing towards anything and she was just living her best life there would never be a conversation of like oh how dare you buy something and not but like there was ne i swear to god there was never a point where i made her feel like she had to hide something 
it was her own conscious like you're here for months at a time doing whatever you want whenever you want we're paying for her flights back and forth most of the time she used to get her own flights but at some point i'm paying for your flights so like it's a it's a free all-inclusive holiday at this point your own conscience is telling you oh my god guys i, I went shopping and they are home da -da -da -da. That's why that's why she tried to hide the, the shopping bags from us. That was so wild. She literally snuck them in through the window. And that was like, just keep quiet. Everyone just sit down, continue watching TV. We pretended like we didn't see anything. She comes in, she knocks at the door. My brother's boo stands up, opens the door for her. She comes in. And then she sits in the living room with us. And she's like, yeah. She's basically like giving us the gist of what happened during her day. She's like making conversation, asking what we're watching, you know regular 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 chats yeah and we're entertaining we're not even being salty nothing we're like yeah no uh this movie abc our day was abc we did that that day how was your day she's telling us about her day da, da, da. and we're waiting for the point where she's like i went shopping whatever like we're waiting for that part it never came guys when i tell you she sat there making conversation with us for about an hour and a half she sat there making conversation with us for about an hour and a half. And we're like, okay, when is she gonna bring up the bags? She never did. She she never she never brought up the bags. Then she gets up, she's like, oh guys, I'm tired, da, 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 whatever. Then she goes to the room. She takes those bags, the shopping bags, she shoves it into her suitcase and she closes it. Is that not wild? Or is it just me? Is that not wild? I'm thinking back to this like how like <sighs> the thing is my toxic trait is that I'm not a very confrontational person I don't like confronting people and I, it's bad I know it's a horrible thing to have so did I confront her about that I never did but I took mental notes like I took a mental note and I was like There was this time when she went out. Um, like I said, she can go out. But I think her phone died at some point. I don't know what happened. But she came back the next afternoon. Like, yes, you can come back whatever time you want. Nah. Like the whole night before, I was waiting up because I was thinking that she's going to come up at any given point. And someone needs to open the door for her. You know? Guys, I was dead the worried that if she's busy they're having the time of her life at no point did you think to borrow someone's phone okay maybe you don't you don't know my number like that borrow someone's charger wherever you slept all i needed was a hey i'm not coming back tonight that's it that's that's really that it really be that simple like it really truly speaking really could be that simple not even a text like if you don't know my number go on someone's phone type in my instagram be like hey i'm not coming in today i i'm coming back tomorrow afternoon you don't even need to tell me what you're doing it's none of my business with that text i know that you're fine i know that you're staying out on your own will because at the end of the day god forbid honestly god forbid something happens to you who's gonna have to explain to your mother what happened your mother's gonna ask me where were you i don't know who were you with i don't know <laughs> what time did she say she was gonna come back i don't know but she's staying in the house with you. I just felt like there were so many inconsiderate things that she did. Like so many. It just was a lot. And it was like. You really don't give a fuck. You really honest to God don't care about frankly anything. About anyone at this point. So fast forward to this point of the story that I started off with. Remember Rob? She was always on and off with Rob. And Shane, when she would, used to come, she used to act out. Like, basically, Rob did some foul shit. That's all, that's all that needs to be said about that. Rob did some foul shit to her with another girl in her present. And it put her in a, in a really bad headspace. And, guys, throughout this whole time, I've been telling her to stay away from Rob. Rob is a horrible person. There were so many things that happened with her and Rob that I felt like spiritually, guys... I don't know if this is going to make sense to you, but you know when you're in a place where God doesn't want you to be, just stuff happens. Stuff just goes wrong. When your ancestors are not happy with where you are, 
you just continue to get hurt physically emotion you just continue to get hurt until you learn your lesson and you walk away from that situation she got hurt physically hurt so many times and i used to tell her friend like god is telling you to step away like this is not where you're meant to be but i heard some physically so many times i don't mean like him hitting her i don't as far as i know i don't think he ever hit her but i mean like she'd be in the club with him when she was with him she'd be in the club standing on the table she fell off the table and the glass shattered and it stabbed her through her thigh what are the chances of that happening that was situation number one situation number two rob was busy driving and i don't know what happened but they got into a really 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 bad car accident where the car rolled several times and she got pretty hurt luckily thank god she didn't lose her life thank god she didn't have any serious permanent injuries i don't even want to get into it like so many things happen i mean i believe i really do believe that your ancestors are working hard to make sure that you stay on your path the path that was given to you i believe that your ancestors are kind of like your guides like your guides through life they advise you they guide you through life they you know you know you stay on the path and god is the one that sets the path for you so i just feel like i really do believe in science if you have a flight to catch and everything goes wrong the outfit you set out last night all of a sudden you burn it while you're ironing it things happen back to back you burn now you need a new outfit and while you're putting on that outfit it rips and then when you're packing your bag just breaks because it's so full or whatever the situation is your bag breaks and when you're making coffee in the morning just before you're supposed to leave you spill that coffee all over yourself or when you're supposed to head out all of a sudden even though you put your car keys in the same spot every single day all of a sudden you can't find your car keys or you can't find your phone on your way there the traffic lights aren't working and the traffic is hectic and like it's like an ongoing of all these things happening back to back it's just simply me it's your guys just basically telling you don't go don't go it's not the right place for you to go just don't do it just just don't go there's a, a story about how a church went on fire was it on fire or exploded or something like that and the people that were meant to be in that church at that time all of a sudden all conveniently something went wrong with the day one overslept one had to go pick up someone else that was far another one car broke down another one all these things happened to all these people and who are normally very punctual always there on time all of them had an issue that prevented them from being there on time and by the time they got there the church had exploded had they been in there they would have lost their lives that was God basically steering them away from danger when all that stuff happens back to back every time when you're with this man something bad happens to you every single time something bad happens to you every single time you are around this man something bad happens maybe just maybe maybe that's God telling you that you're not supposed to be with this man this man is doing more harm for you than good even friends guys even friends every time something doesn't go right for me I still have a scar on my knee I have a thing inside my inside my shin I had a car accident and I think something broke in there it's till this day it's still swollen this car accident happened five years ago till this day it's still swollen till this day I kind of prep apply pressure for it it's because i had a friend that whenever i was with her or around her something bad always happened and it started off with light stuff and it just escalated and just escalated but in that season of my life guys so much happened so much happened to me but that's a story for another day maybe at some point you need to catch the hint that maybe this is not the space for me and you need to take that lesson before something bad truly happens yes i was in a car accident and then and so many things happened but things could have been worse i'm walking i'm talking i'm alive today i'm thriving i'm living my best life i'm resilient i'm strong i'm powerful i have head trauma we're good i used to tell her the exact same thing like Friend, every time you're with this man something bad happens look at all the scars in your body literal physical proof look at all the scars in your body 
point them out and tell me what happened and who you were with every time these things happen to you who were you with all these girls are challenging you when all these girls are wanting to fight you when all these girls are sliding into your dms when all these things are happening who is responsible for your pain and i i think i told her i was like at some point you're gonna have to choose because i'm not gonna stay for all this hurt and all this pain that you're going because it's traumatizing it's traumatizing i'm not gonna stay here for all this at some point you're gonna have to choose him or me and that's just that and yes i'm giving you the ultimatum and it's for your good it's for my peace it's for everyone's sanity trigger warning sorry guys I don't remember what it was whether she caught him cheating I don't remember what it was I think for her maybe also it was like a collective a collection of different things that happened she was fighting with him she used to go on these long long calls with him and she was fighting with him and all this stuff and so much so that she one day decided that she's gonna take a bunch of pills she took a bunch of pills we were all in the house but it was late at night so I was in my room uh, Spoo was in his room we were all like going to sleep she took a bunch of pills uh, I think it was a bunch of panados and she she took a bunch of pills in an attempt to just you know and I think once she had taken those pills she regretted it she came and she told me she's like Imani I, I think I did something messed up I was like what what did you do and I feel so bad because at this point it was like I was really really frustrated with her that I was a little bit like I was a little bit like um, like blunt and cut offish I was like what did you do what is it this time that you did and she was like and then she started crying and then I softened and I was like oh shit what happened like what's the what happened and she's like I don't know if I should tell you um, but I think I did something bad I was like what did you do like what happened and like it's taking so long for her to get it out but she's crying so I I, I see that like it's something I see it in her eyes that is something bad and now my mind is racing I'm like what like you know your brain just goes places and then she finally says like I took some pills and I was like okay what pills like, what pills did you take and it's not clicking to me like that's what you mean it's like my mind didn't go there she's like I took some banana and then it clicked to me I was like wait how many did you take I had once upon a time also attempted to do the same thing with panados and I took like almost half a bottle of panados and I know way too well what that feeling of regret feels like I know that feeling of like uh, and that feeling you get when it starts like makes you nauseous and it, uh, I know that feeling so I was like wait how many did you take and I'm now now I'm panicking now I'm like I'm waking up everyone in the house I was like down get get up like get up she took pills and we're trying to like i know what, something that she's supposed to do is, i don't know if she's supposed to do this actually but this is what worked for me when i did it in that, like long enough for me to get to the hospital is like to flush them out i made it take a ton of water drink a, sh a literal ton of water and then throw it up so like uh, a two liter i made a gulp the two liter and then i made her like throw it up and we're like, we need to take you to the hospital. We need to take you to the hospital to make sure that you're fine. Da, da, da. And she didn't want to go. Like, she was completely refusing to go to the hospital. And I was like, you don't know what this, you like, you don't know. Like, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, uh, guys, I was panicking. I was panicking. I was panicking because, guys, life is so precious. Life is so precious. To end it all over a guy that just doesn't give a shit about you because when i was asking her why the f would you do this why would you do this to yourself and she's like no because he did this and that and that and i was like <sighs> are you not ashamed of yourself are you not embarrassed this is really embarrassing as f***ed up as it sounds at the end of the day you're gonna do this to yourself and you're gonna end it all you're gonna like clock out over this man and not even by your funeral he's gonna have another girl not even by your funeral he's gonna have another girl by your side and rob is exactly that type of man he doesn't care about you he doesn't and you're gonna end it all 
you're gonna end it all over this piece and it gets me so heated because she was the second friend to do this the second friend that tried to end her life over a man that doesn't care about her and it's so messed up like heartbreak is not easy heartbreak will have you thinking that life is over in nowhere i'm trying to doubt your feelings because heartbreak is not easy men will rock you so hard that you really want to end it all but what i am saying to you is one thing about heartbreak heartbreak is hard and one day you'll eventually get over it in the morning one thing you can guarantee one thing you can count on every single day is that the sun will come up so yes today might be a gloomy day yesterday might be raining yesterday might be gray outside yesterday might be cold yesterday might be all these things but the sun will come up the sun will be there that's really 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 what i want people to understand like if it's a thing of like a mental illness or of, like you know if that's what's leading you to feeling like this guys please seek help like even when everything seems hopeless even when everything seems like not worth fighting for please seek help just give it a shot that's all I'm saying. Just give it a shot. Like, just give it a fighting chance. Go see a professional. Speak to your friends and family. Go out and meet new people. Do all these things and give it a real fighting chance. A real fighting chance. And go in there with forced positivity. Force yourself to think positively. Sometimes thinking positively is really a fight and it's something you need to do consciously. It's something that you need to really fight for being positive really isn't easy like that being positive really isn't something that comes naturally for a lot of people for a lot of us it's not something that comes easily so it's something that you really have to do and the reason though that I felt like I needed to cut off communication with Samantha is that it was just getting too much it felt like she was being really reckless with her life she was being really reckless with the way she made decisions. She was being really reckless with the way that she did things, responded to things, and it was becoming very volatile. I don't know if you guys understand what I mean, like when a person is like a volatile, reckless person. It really was that like she was making really bad decisions. And I understand that it stemmed from a lot of things. Like I had to make that decision for myself and my family that like this is not this is not it this is not the type of feelings the type of space the type of environment we want to be in especially considering the shit that we had just come out of the home, the homelessness the evictions all that stuff that we had recently literally just come out of we had faced and we were beginning to come into a space of where the storm had finally ended and the birds were coming out and it was becoming calm again and now we're in a space of volatility and we're bringing us back to like those fight or flight type of instances of reflexes sorry bringing us back to all that stuff it was just not it just wasn't it for us and i felt like she wasn't being respectful of that as well and i felt like i couldn't handle it personally that's how i ended up blocking her i made her tell her mom what happened i don't want us to just book her a flight back home and for her to go back home and then get back in the same destructive space and it might seem harsh but i had to i had to call her mom and i had she had to tell her mom what she did she had to so when she goes back home the mother is aware of what headspace she was in what her capabilities were so that they can give her this the support she needed because I felt like if I just sent her back home if I was just like just get on the flight go back home and she goes back home and her parents don't know what's going on her parents don't know what just happened and all that other stuff then it's like okay and then what happens if it happens again and that's on me now because I didn't let her parents know what was going on I think I think she may still be upset with me with that but her, her mom just had to know so that one they can give her the support she needs two it won't happen again because guys life is so precious 
and she's a beautiful girl yo she has such a bright future ahead of her there's so many so much opportunity so much she has so much love to give she has so much love to receive and i just was so also so mad at her because she's like wasting all that potential for what for what guys it was a traumatic experience i don't want to lie to you so much happened so yeah i really hope like wherever she is things are going really good for her last i checked things were really going i bumped into her and in, in rosebank one time and i said we said hi to her she said that she was doing good something that she had really been wanting to do a place she really had been wanting to go she was finally going and i, I wish her all the success in the world story of how I ended up blocking a friend because she tried to and it really showed me that she really didn't care about anything else I really do wish her the best I'm so glad she's okay anyway guys thank you so much for watching this story time I need to go back home <laughs> I need to go back home make sure you like comment and subscribe I love you guys so much so much for joining but make sure you make sure you turn them post notifications on because i'm posting a lot more often i have so many more story times other other girls i don't respect so i'm gonna tell them bluntly it's just that this girl i respect and love so much and that's why i'm censoring a lot but there's another juicy one that i need to tell you guys okay there's another juicy one. i'm not gonna censor nothing the personal information i'm not gonna tell but i love you guys so much like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.